Hello everyone. Since Sevastopol Harbour was hit, I thought it worth taking a look at some satellite photos. Some were taken before the attack, showing which ships were there, and one was taken after. First, we're going to have a look at the aftermath, since I'm sure it's the one which you all want to see. So this image was taken a few hours after the attack. It's of Pivdena Bay. This was a bay which Russia claimed was attacked, saying that a net defensive boom was said to be damaged. So here we can see that despite reports of the Black Sea Fleet had been withdrawn from Sevastopol, we can see that there is a lot of prime targets here, as well as a lot of utility vessels. Notably, there are six Rapuha class ships. These are large landing craft and would be an excellent target. And just to clarify, a Rapuha class ship wasn't destroyed early in the war, that was an alligator class ship. However, Two Rapuas were damaged in the same incident, but are now back in active service. Also visible are two Kilo-class submarines. One is highlighted by the uploader being near the pier, being loaded up with missiles. It seems very possible that we can expect some calibre strikes soon. I'm guessing Russia will target some schools and nurseries and hospitals for revenge. There is also one Kilo in the water. I'm not sure if it's moving or if it's temporarily stationed here. Could be that it was moved out of its pen to this location after the attack, while the defensive boom is repaired. Here though, there are no signs of damage. This was a dock which was reported as targeted. However, there's no sign of the Ivan Golubet minesweep which was hit, or the Admiral Makarov which was hit while at sea. There was also a third, so far unidentified ship hit, but we don't know where that was, or even what ship it was. So unfortunately, the one satellite image we have after the attack is so far inconclusive. Now let's have a look at some satellite images from before. These are from October the 28th, and it shows some of the ships currently docked at Sevastopol Harbour. And there's quite a lot. As I mentioned, there were rumours that the harbour had been pretty much emptied of ships, but as we can see, that isn't the case. On this image, there's a pair of Krivak class frigates. In the middle of the Krivaks, there's a Bora class patrol boat. This is a hoverborne vehicle, quite a cool bit of engineering, admittedly. There are only two of these made, and I do really like them, they are pretty cool ships. Next to one of the Krivaks is a Sonya class minesweeper. This is a different class minesweeper to the Ivan Golubets which was hit. There are three Project 22160 patrol ships. These would have been an excellent target as Russia equips these with the caliber missile. I think these are also the ships which we have seen with Tor SAM systems strapped to the back. In the middle of the 22160s is a Ukrainian ship captured in 2014. The Slavyuch U510. It's not pointed out on this image, but it's the one in the middle of the 22160s. Finally, at the end, there's a floating crane. This could be the same floating crane which we saw operating near Snake Island earlier in the war. Before we look at the next image, here is where they are located on um, Google Maps. So it's in the northern part of Sevastopol Harbour. This image here, we can see a Kilo class submarine in dry dock. I believe it is the Colpino, which is reported as undergoing maintenance at the moment. No other Kilos are reported as being repaired, so it's got to be the Colpino. Here is the dry dock's location again on Google Maps for you to see. Here, there are a lot of unidentified vessels. Some of them could be utility ships, such as oilers and transport vessels. Some could even be civilian transports. These weren't identified by the uploader. However, what was identified is another Project 22160, this one in dry dock. This is likely just normal wear and tear and maintenance. There hasn't been a report of a Project 22160 being targeted, so it wouldn't have been damaged in the war. Here is the dry dock's location on Google Maps. The final image we have here, again we can see the six Rapua class landing craft docked. 
Now, not caught on these satellite images are the Admiral Makarov and the Ivan Golubets. So we can't pinpoint the Golubets' location, where it was, when it was hit. The Makarov was at sea when it was hit, but we often see it berthed at the northern part of the harbour. Here is the location of where the Rapua class ships were docked. Going back to the first image, again, this is one a few hours after the attack. It looks to me that the prime targets here are the submarines. Russia reported that a defensive net boom was damaged here, which I assume was protecting one of the submarines. So it seems that that bit of defence did work in foiling the attack. But considering that little boats did manage to get inside the harbour to hit at least two ships and also damage defensive netting, it seems that the dolphins which Russia has guarding the harbour entrance didn't do their job. So I hope we get more photos and satellite images soon. It would be interesting to see what damage was caused to the Makarov and also the Golabets, as well as what the third ship was, as nobody has managed to identify that yet. So this was a very important strike. Even though at first glance the damage isn't as severe as thought, many people were expecting numerous ships to be sunk. It's still an important strike. For starters, it shows that Russian ships, even in Svasopol harbour, are vulnerable. Despite Russia's claims, we didn't see off the attack. Three ships, including the Makarov, were damaged. We don't know how badly damaged, but the Golubet has been reported to have a hole in it. The fact that some boats did get through is concerning for Russia, and if it happened once, it can happen again. I expect Russia will step up its patrols or even deploy additional patrol boats to Sevastopol to defend against it. So the attack was a success. Perhaps not as big a success as many were expecting, but it was a successful attack. Most importantly, the Makarov will have to undergo repairs. This is one of Russia's main calibre launchers, so neutralising that, if only for a couple of months, will save lives. Now, as we saw in the video, there looked to be two waves. Some of the boats were filmed at dawn before it was light, some when it was light. It doesn't seem the ideal time to attack, as the boats are more easily spotted. So I can't help but wonder if there were delays while crossing the Black Sea. Perhaps the current or waves and that sort of thing slowed the boats down so they arrived later than expected. Or it's possible that the boats didn't travel as fast as... Um, Ukraine thought they would, so they arrived later than planned. As really, you would expect the plan to be to have these hit the harbour at the dead of night when they are harder to spot. I hope we get some information on the mission at some point, as it's a really, really good and really, really interesting one. If you found this video interesting, please click like and subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks again, and take care, everybody.